Hello everyone. Welcome to my Raptor Ready series. Welcome to this episode. Episode 16. In the last episode, we looked at the overview of what the Great Tribulation is, the the what of the Great Tribulation and the why. And so if you have not uh, listened to that, I want to encourage you to go and listen to it. I believe it will bless your life. In this episode, we're going to take a bit of um, a detailed look at the Great Tribulation. Uh, starting with the opening of the seals. So let me just give a bit of introduction on uh, on the Great Tribulation. The Great Tribulation will be characterized by the opening of seven seals, the sounding of seven trumpets, and the pouring of the seven bowls of plagues upon the earth. And these are all in the book of Revelation. And so the Great Tribulation will start with the opening of the seven seals. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this episode. All the seals, the seven seals, will all occur in the first three and a half years of the Great Tribulation. As we said previously that this tribulation will last for seven years. So the first three and a half years we see the opening of the seven seals. And uh, this three and a half years will be the first half of the 70th week of Daniel in the book of uh, the the book of Daniel where we talked about the 70 weeks of Daniel all right so let's get on with the first four seals which we now call the four horsemen of the apocalypse uh, so these are the four seals out of the seven seals that we're going to discuss. So, um, so let's take a quick look at each of them. So I'm going to read from the book of Revelation. So the first seal is in Revelation chapter 6 from verse 1 to 2. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a, a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked and behold a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow. And a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now the opening of this first seal will be the first major political event after the rapture. And the rapture of the church uh, took place in about Revelation chapter 4 which we've also discussed in the past. And so this the opening of the first seal ushers in the antichrist so as we read here the rider of this white horse is the antichrist he comes into the world scene and probably occasioned by the chaos brought about by the rapture of the church where millions and millions of people disappear from the earth you can imagine there will be a great chaos in the earth and so, this Antichrist rides into the world scene through that chaos. And riding into the world scene in a white horse with a bow, without arrows, it signifies that he will come into the world like a Messiah and a man of peace. And he will be received and accepted as a messiah and a man of peace but he brings a desire for world domination and he will work to establish one world government with himself as the dictator now let's read revelation chapter 6 verse 3 to 4 for the second seal now the second seal Revelation 6, 3 to 4. When he opened the second seal, I had a living, I had the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. 
So we see as this second seal is opened, the rider of this red horse was given power to take peace from the earth. This is the spirit of war entering the war scene. Red, of course, the color of the horse is a symbol of bloodshed, while the great sword symbolizes war. So the second seal unveils a worldwide conflict, more like a third world war. And the consequences of this worldwide war will follow in the next two seals that we're going to look about shortly. So the third seal is in Revelation chapter 6 from, from verse 5 to 6. And it reads, when he looked, when he opened the third seal, I looked, I heard the third living creature say, come and see. So I looked and behold a black horse and who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the, in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and a three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the wine. So. The black horse with the rider holding a pair of scales in his hands represents the spirit of famine. Famine and hunger are the natural consequences of war, which was flagged up or flagged off with the opening of the second seal. So we see that as a consequence of the world war, there's going to be a large scale global famine and some of you may, may may recall during the world war during the second world war a total of more than 20 million people died from starvation and and diseases so we see that famine and starvation always follow a world scale uh, conflict now let's look at the fourth seal the fourth rider. Revelation chapter 6 verse 7 to 8. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the field. So, we see in this fourth seal, two personalities were unveiled. Death and Hades. Yep. Of course, pale is a color of death. And here we see that hell followed death closely and their mission is clear so you can see that this fourth seal is actually giving us a a picture of the the level of casualties the level of casualties that will follow the world war hear this is the unseen word of the dead like a holding place for those who died without Christ? And hell or Hades have enlarged his mouth to take those who will be slain by death. And this will be the victims caused by war and famine. So there's going to be high, high, high numbers of casualties. following the world war. Now the fifth seal is in Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 to 11. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true unto you, judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. 
Then a white robe was given to each of them and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. So we see here that when the fifth seal was opened, John saw the souls of martyrs who had been killed for the word of God and the testimony they had. These martyrs will be both Jewish people and Gentile who have come to believe in Christ during the Great Tribulation or those Christians who were left behind after the rapture. They will be killed by the Antichrist. The Antichrist and his government will severely persecute those that held on to their faith and the word of God. It will be the most difficult period for believers to be on earth. Multitudes of believers will be killed for their faith and testimony. And here we see in this, in this seal, these people, these martyrs who had been killed for their testimony, they asked the Lord to avenge their death on the Antichrist and his government. But they were told to rest a little longer because more people were going to die in the hands of the Antichrist and his government. Uh, of course, this is another evidence. Um, this is another evidence to show that people will still be saved during the Great Tribulation. Now, so let's look at the sixth, the sixth seal. That's found in the book of Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 6 from verse 12 to 17. I'll read it. I looked when he opened the sixth seal and behold there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig drops its late figs when it's shaken by the mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who is able to stand? <laughs> the opening of the sixth seal gives us a glimpse into the end of the created order. This will be a turning point in human history. A momentous event unlike anything that we have ever seen. There will be so much cosmic disturbance that we alter the normal order of the universe, which we have taken for granted for generations. You can see that in the previous five seals, the judgments that followed were likely brought about by the activities of the Antichrist and the rulers of the earth. In other words, Everything that happened from seal 1 to seal 5 were as a result of the global conflicts, the activities of the Antichrist on the earth. But the sixth seal marks the beginning of God's wrath being poured upon the earth. This event will be accompanied with worldwide earthquakes of epic proportions, likely caused by Meteorites slamming into the earth, one after the other, similar to how figs drop to the ground from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The nature and effect of this judgment is such that it causes all mankind, from kings to slaves to rulers to rich to poor, to recognize that God, the Creator, is acting in human history with divine judgment, and it will be unmistakable.
Now, the seventh seal is in Revelation chapter 8 from verse 1 to 2. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And uh, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. So, the opening of the seventh seal ushers in the next wave of judgment and cataclysmic events. Which we will see in the judgment of the trumpets. And we will examine that in the next episode. We will examine that in the next episode. So we see that this the opening of the seven sea was basically preparing the ground for the next wave of judgment. So before we begin to uh, bring this to an end, just a few final thoughts. So as we read in Revelation chapter 6 from verse 12 to 17, the Bible says, And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, who is able to stand. These events described with the opening of the seas will be literal. They are not just symbolic. They will happen literally. Just as we have seen in the past when God brought similar judgments upon Egypt. And these events may look far-fetched or unrealistic. But I want you to remember that when Noah predicted that there will be a, a global flood that will wipe out humanity. It also looked far-fetched and unrealistic, but it did happen. And so, the only way of escape is through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and, and I know that some people have asked before that why would God put these horrific details in the Bible? And by the way, at the end of these seven seals, the level of human casualties will probably be in several hundreds of millions of people. At least 25% of the world population will have been imparted or, or 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 dead so there's going to be heavy casualties and, and people wonder why would god put these horrific details in the bible and i believe that this message is not meant to frighten us but to warn us and make us see what god wants to save us from or what god has saved us from God in his great love has made a way of escape for us if you will receive his offer of salvation. So, if you have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you, this is a great opportunity for you to do that because God loves you and he does not want you to perish. That is why he has written down every detail of this judgment so that you will know how much he loved you and he made his son to take this punishment for you so that you don't have to go through it. I believe this has blessed you. In the next episode, we'll look at the next wave of judgment, which is the trumpet judgments. Here are a few questions that you can look. What should be the right response to the message of the Great Tribulation? And what are the indications today that the world is moving towards 
one world government under the Antichrist. So I believe that uh, you have a bit of understanding of the details of the Great Tribulation. I will see you in the next episode. Until then, God bless you and I will see you in the next episode.